Hello. Um, one of the things we've been working on in uh, SQL Explorer uh, doesn't have anything to do with the SQL. It has to do with how we're displaying our results down here. Um, one of the things that I found annoying is that since we don't know what type of data or what kind of field order we're getting, um, the columns may not fit the results. So we thought maybe we could come up with something in JavaScript using a web viewer that would give you the ability to resize the columns. And uh, what we've ended up getting is, is a lot more functionality um, using a jQuery uh, plugin. So I wanted to uh, show you what we've come up with. Um, if we run our query now, we get something a little different than a portal, but something that looks like a portal and, and behaves something like a portal. It does scroll up and down. We do have our rows. Um, we do get this hover action. Um, and this is built using this jQuery grid uh, plugin um, and jQuery and jQuery UI uh, themes. Um, you know, so actually not that uh, tough a nut to crack once you get into it. Um, this library, this jQuery library um, plugin gives you a lot of functionality that you don't get from a traditional FileMaker portal. Um, gives you dynamic sorts, which you could do in FileMaker, but you know, these come natively. You get column resizing, which is a nice feature, I think, particularly for SQL Explorer. Like I said, you don't know what these columns are going to be. Um, selection, multi-selection, deselection, that's something that we do have in FileMaker, but nice to have here. Uh, another nice touch that's available here in this library is the ellipsis um, when something's truncated, and that's actually applied with the CSS, so you don't have to worry about doing calculations or anything. And you know, you see if I slide this uh, column here, we get the ellipsis here, and, and these dynamically show you that there's still additional content. You know, and and, and you get the uh, tooltip hovers as well. Um, another really cool thing I think is the this feedback on the load and the feedback itself is cool knowing that we've got 500 loaded into the portal or in this case really the dom um, because you know that's happening in filemaker but you don't get a lot of visibility to it the nice thing here is you can control this load number so it, it, it initially loads 500 and then if i start scrolling down then it loads another 500 and another 500 so that's an option within this plugin of how many load at a time so depending on what the portal's doing and, and you know, what's going to be there, having that control, you could get some really, really uh, nice performance. Um, another nice thing that's, I think, very cool here is the ability to uh, dynamically change the columns. Um, you know, again, without having to go into layout mode and just uh, being able to give that to folks um, for their own reporting. You know, in combination with something like SQL Explorer, where you choose the fields and then, you know, after you get them, being able to manipulate them this way um, seems like a, a, a real feature. Um, so, very excited about this. You know, one question, you know, that comes up is like, well, you know, this thing has a CSS theme and the FileMaker layout has a theme. So, if I want to change the FileMaker layout, is this going to be a big deal in, um, you know, to update the CSS here? And you know, that gets us thinking about deployment issues, and I wanted to show you kind of my first pass at this. And I built uh, two layouts, one called JavaScript, and this is just static text on the layout. Um, these entire libraries kind of crunched into little boxes, and you can come to this layout and use get layout object attribute to read these. And to me, the idea of having a, you know, a bunch of these on here, a lot more than five, and then dynamically reading them and loading them into your HTML seems like a pretty good way to go. Um, I have a note here, you know, don't mess with these. And then, you know, these are links that'll give you the unminified version if, if you want to see what's in there without having to go in there and, you know, accidentally messing up this code, which can be somewhat sensitive. Um, so that's the JavaScript part, you know, maybe the ability to set some of those portal options um, here with a field. Um, but, you know, like I said, I think the default behavior is pretty good. But with the CSS, I built a separate layout. And what we did is we set up these default themes. This is the one that's kind of particular to the grid that we don't want to mess with. But it uses a jQuery UI theme. And I built a custom one that I think fits pretty well with Onyx. But if you don't like that, um, we've given you the ability to put your own theme in. So we're going to go ahead and go to the jQuery UI. And it's actually going to start 
with the default theme that I set up because all of the settings that I have are in this giant URL. Um, and when you download a new theme in the header there, you'll have that entire URL. So even though there's no save button on here, this took me a little while to figure out. That's why I wanted to let you know um, that you, know, you, you are saving these and, and can come back to, to where you left off. So you, know, you can start with this and it's got this you know, very basic tools for, for making the changes if you don't want to do the CSS manually. Um, so you can start with the one that I did or you can go over to this gallery and they've got a bunch of uh, there that you can either use as is, but also use those as a starting point uh, to build your own. Here's one called uh, Tron-tastic. So let's go ahead and download that and I'll show you how easy it is to put in. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this theme. It gives us this downloader page. I don't need all the uh, jQuery UI components. I only need the theme. So I'm actually gonna turn all these off and then you'll see it's going to give me the Trontastic theme at the bottom. So I'm going to download that. And now it's on my desktop. And you can see it's what it comes with. It's got the CSS. And then it does give you some of this uh, jQuery stuff. But all we're interested here in here is the CSS. So then we're going to hit this button, which is going to allow us to import a new CSS and override it. So we're going to go to our desktop, find this, the CSS, Trontastic. You can do either the custom or the minified. Um, you know, if you kind of want to see what it is, you know, either one is fine. We'll go ahead and do the custom here, and we're going to insert it. And it inserts or imports um, the the CSS and also the associated images with it, uh, which are nice. And then if we go back to our query page and run it, we see that we have the new theme in place. So you know, the idea of having to update these themes and, and keeping them aligned with your FileMaker themes becomes a lot less intimidating if you can build a, a FileMaker system for deploying them. Um, so pretty good stuff there. And then, um, you know, it's as simple to restore to the default here. Just clear this out. And that restores the default. And there's no reason this can't be a portal instead of just one field and you know, dynamically load them depending on the layout. And, and you know, this could be the basis of, of getting pretty fancy uh, with these things, I think. And um, so if we go back here, we should have our, our default theme back, uh, which we do, you know, and, and it doesn't change any of the uh, JavaScript uh, functionality, which is really nice. One last feature I think is pretty neat. It's a little buggy right now, but I wanted to show you is they've actually got uh, custom sort <laughs> rows too. Um, I have found it a little buggy, and, and I think it's in conflict with either some other way I've deployed this. Um, you know, and I don't. You know, that could be useful in some places, not really necessarily useful here. But just to give you an idea of some of the other functionality that you know that's built into these uh, these uh, type of plugins, and uh, I think I showed uh, this is the uh, plugin that we're using here, this jQuery Grid uh, plugin from this True Rand uh, blog. And um, I think their documentation and everything is really good. So I definitely recommend uh, checking it out. All right. Thanks.